Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again, and then, um, and like I've done before on other casts, um, as far as the music goes, it's kind of a, it's gonna be kind of a wonky setup. Um, technically, I'm gonna be playing the Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, the end credits, but, um, the background, the, the music that's playing, um, is actually for the, uh, it's actually the Duma clan territories. I uh, I don't want to go too in depth on the game, but basically, it's a game that's centered. You have to you have to kill like four or five of your brothers, and then eventually you have to fight Old Kane himself. Um, Duma is one of those brothers you have to kill, and this is a this is going to be a small sample of the music that plays when you're in uh, Duma's territory. It it's the best one I could find because it's a it's it's a big, wide, expansive area, so there's lots of different types of background music depending on which area you are. So it it kind of took me a while to find just the right one. I just remember, and I it was fruitless. Um, a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the music has this annoying wah 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 going on going in the background, which is really annoying. So this. This isn't my ideal one. This, yeah, this isn't my ideal one, but it's it, it's it's the best I could find. So finally, I just said fuck it. Type down end credits, uh, legacy of Kane, and all that, because I because I knew I knew it had it had a lot of the good stuff. So, but again, I don't I don't want to be showing the end credits though during this cast. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just gonna throw the Demas symbol. Uh, that's Dumas clan symbol up in front of it. So, so just to let you know what's going on. So let me go ahead and uh, rewind this back. Okay. All right. So to start with, just uh, playing some more DBFZ, um, and I did learn something on this. I found a method on here. I no, I actually um, I had a look on the browser. I went on the browser, typed down Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, money making. It just just uh, brow re browse through various websites trying to find something that worked. Um, I, so which I, in which I did. Eventually, I settled on um. Uh, it's called versus mode. You could uh. You can set the number of contestants, or you can you can set the number of participants. Um, you can set the difficulty and all that. And the way it's set up, you always get the same amount of money, no matter how difficult of a fight it is. But with so with this here, I could just set it up to one single person. That's how I wanted it all along. Um, one of the things that soured me on this game is the fact that you have you. Basically, you have to play with three player. You have to have a three-man team, which I'm not a fan of. I just want to play one. So I finally found a mode where you can do this. And I found a mode where you can actually make some money doing it. Um, it's it's not very much, but then again, you get what you pay for too. Like I said, um, I can set the difficult I can set the difficulty as low as I want, and at the same time. I can go in with any character I want, any any one single character, and just practice with that. And if it, if the challenge is proving too easy, if you know if the battles are too short, then yeah, I can go ahead and ramp up the difficulty. So this is a method that's almost as good as training mode. You know, now on what you know, on the downside. Versus mode, it's not continuous. I mean, I mean, as is probably obvious, your opponent has limited health. You know, once you, you know, once you defeat them, then you have to go with the the win quote, the win quote, and all that. You have to, you, but um, you have to re do a rematch. But like I said, you could you could farm money doing this. So, so I think I just bought me a reason to keep playing, and I do have to check something. Okay, loop mode is turned on. 
So, but yeah, um, I just found something that kept me going. But like I, like I said, you don't you don't make much money doing it. But at, but on the upside, it's an alternative to training mode, though. So. And then uh, something else I discovered too. Uh, I got a, a new uh, a new channel I sub to Game Test Play. I remember um, I remember seeing he did a he reviewed the uh, FX3 tables pinball FX3. Um, probably saw them like about a year or two ago. Well, uh, one of the uh, one of the FX3 review review videos came up on my YouTube recommendations. So I'm like, oh wow, I haven't seen that in a long time. Watched it again, and I'm like, you know what? Let me check this channel out. And oh my god, I hit the jackpot. Cause, cause yeah, um, he's a he's a retro guy, uh, and uh, he even up, uh, he even plays uh, Zachariah Pinball a lot. Like he even reviewed the tables and everything. So. Which, uh, which, for a time, that's what I was streaming too. So, chances are, what I might end up doing is, uh, on today's pinball stream, probably instead of pinball arcade, because I've been having such bad luck with it lately, just on a cold streak, I'll, I might just do Zachariah pinball instead. But, I mean, I'm not, I am mean, definitely not one to shy away from a pinball challenge. But, um, I eventually ended up losing interest in Zachariah Pinball. It's just mostly due to the table design. It's like this really... And I think I said this during when I was making, when I was making my um, pinball tier list. It, they, it's, I swear to God, they must have been designed by Rube Goldberg or something. Or if you ever play a game, if you ever played a board game called Mousetrap, the tables kind of remind me of that. It's like... I can't I, and I can't really unlike uh, unlike Pinball FX3 and Pinball Arcade I can't really fault Zachariah for the table design but I like tables that are understandable for lack of a better word or they, they like have a they have some kind of flow to them but uh, a lot of the tables in Zachariah don't really have that they're really, they're really goofy and stuff. It's like design is like almost senseless, kind of like the table bone busters. Um, and I guess creature from the Black Lagoon also comes to mind. But um, I, it, I also have to remind myself too that uh, Zachariah Pinball is a, uh, is a real life company that's based in Italy, so. Their heads are in a different place over in Italy, whereas, uh, you know, here in America, we all have our American sensibilities and all that. You know, what we like in a pinball machine, etc. Well, they think a lot different over in Italy, apparently. So, so because of that, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of give them a pass. And plus, uh, something, something else, too, I noticed is just, it's... It's almost like a. It's almost like me trying to stream Path of Exile and Grim Dawn. It, it, it's like my computer can just barely stream them. I kind of get that same feeling when uh, when I was streaming Zachariah as well. It's like like there's this little bit of lag every so often. Sometimes it actually causes me to to miss time a flip or something, or sometimes it causes the ball to go down the. Or sometimes it causes a preventable drain. You know, just these occasional, these occasional lag spikes here and there. I have that in uh, Path of Exile and uh, Grim Dawn as well. It's like I almost need a better computer just to stream Zachariah. But like I, like I said, like I said, after uh, after checking out the channel, after checking out the channel, uh, seeing some of the Zachariah. Uh, review videos. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should give it another go. And then, um, plus, uh, he's the, the person himself. He strikes me as a pretty interesting guy. It, 
and it was something else that uh oh, oh god what's the word I'm looking for it was something else about him I totally forgot like when I saw these uh, FX3 review videos a year or two ago um he he kind of reminds if you ever seen the movie Heavy Metal um the the uh the Dead of Earth skit kind of reminds me of that uh that the wimpy guy, him and the uh, him and the hot babe, were were fighting for control of the control of the planet or something. The, he was the normal. This is normal, my bravest warrior. You and him will penetrate her chambers to steal the sacred lockdown. And if I refuse, you die. She dies. Everybody dies. You know that. I mean that guy. He, um, I don't I don't know his actual name, but he kind of reminds me of him. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not making fun of him. Definitely not putting him down, but I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool touch. I mean, I'm used to, I mean, I'm used to lots of other people sounding normal, for lack of a better word. Just, hi, welcome to my video. Uh, this is, um, I'm, I'm doing a review of, uh, of, I'm doing a review of Blackthorn for the Super Nintendo. Um, when I first played it, I really liked it. It was a great, you know, et cetera, you know, just, kind of kind of flat for lack of a better word so yeah but uh definitely gonna be all watching some more of game test plays videos though so oh let me let me let me let me rephrase that it's what i've it's what i've been doing a good chunk of the night just checking out checking out a bunch of his videos and uh i'm gonna take a take a drink of uh arizona green tea Um, but yeah, I've also been playing some, uh, Clicker Heroes, so, like I said, I'm in my idle game phase. So, just while I'm here, create him. Oh, damn. So, just let me go ahead and, uh, get this updated. back on their quest and there's always a small chance that these guys can actually die when um while questing so and these guys aren't cheap you have to pay for them with uh you have to pay for them for them with rubies it's the uh microtransaction currency so you don't you don't you don't want them doing these uh long two day Two day quest, you want to keep them small. So, so a series of small quests are a lot better than one long one. So, we got here. Nope. Salvage that one. those puffer fish or whatever they pop up in random places you click them ah uh, you get you get a random amount of money or you get a sometimes you get an extra ruby which again they're used for microtransactions almost And um, one other thing I want to do, um, I've just been hearing a, I've just been hearing a lot about uh, you, uh, Russia invading the Ukraine, and there's talk of World War Three. So, whenever I'm curious about something like that, I always go to, I always look up Jessica Wildfire because, come on, there you are. But apparently, but I'm gonna try to keep this quick. 
or as quick as I can. Uh, World War III has already started, and you're fighting it. Pick a side. The world has ended the war. A lot of our an engineered famine that killed anywhere from four to ten million people in the Ukraine during a single winter. The word means mass murder by starvation. And I'm sure I'm sure it's a and I'm sure it's a legit tactic in war too. Ukraine officially considers it a genocide as do a handful of other countries. Yeah. And technically they're right too. That's so. Yeah, genocide, that's like that's a massively mass murder right there. Force the country over harvest on our staggering grain quotas. Uh. Oh, damn. Yeah. Thousands of ordinary, educated, innocent people killed and ate each other. Parents had to decide if they were going to become meat for their children. It makes you sick to read about. Imagine living it. You let history repeat itself. Actually, now that I think about it, um, the band Funkadelic, I think they had an album called America Eats Its Young or something like that. I might have to give that one another listen, because when I heard it, it didn't sound very funky. So. so yeah, I... The harsh lesson in humanity. Soviet Union banned discussion of it, so no surprises there. Bad enough to learn about it. Yep. Invading other countries and pillaging your resources. Murdering your own citizens through multiple and means of doing each other couple justifications for it. Told them they deserved it. Told them it was their fault. I blame them. I didn't know it. Actually, now that I think about it, um, one of the most evil companies out there, Monsanto, I think the show I watched is called Food Inc. But um, I guess, I guess farmers, farmers that work for Monsanto, for some reasons that I don't understand, they were uh, saving seeds, like they would grow their crops, but then save the seeds for whatever reason. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, um, Monsanto would uh, would find out about this, hunt them down, and then sue them, possibly even arrested them on the spot. I think that's what happened, but basically they would shut down the farmers. Yeah, call them barbaric. Hard lesson this time, murder over 20 people while trying to modernize industrial rip. It's hard to see that his crimes were ecological and environmental, and those ecological crimes killed millions. Let me look at something real quick. Okay, you guys can see it. It's hard to read about Gold Out of Seer Money is it's by thousands for all kinds of reasons. Even not clapping for his birthday. Team Hardy is well, a common team in humanity. He's not the only monster. He's a pattern. Then learn your own leaders committed war crimes and extra genocide against entire generations. Especially hard to learn about after you spend most of your life being taught to worship them your mountain fathers. Oh! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As heroes are always told the truth, even to chop down a cherry tree or broke someone's plow, hard but necessary. Uh, Putin. Stalin 2.0. <laughs> No, he's not a communist. Then again, neither was Stalin. Oh, damn. 
Yeah, here's well, here's a news flash. If you ask me, the political philosophy is going to fall back on. It's just a bunch of bullshit they use to justify their own psychopathic violence. Okay, good to know. Or actually, I mean, if you looked at the if you looked at the textbook definition of communism, I don't I don't think it said in a way any I don't I don't think it said anything about genocide in there. Just um, it's just supposed to be a, a an economic system where where it's bas basically it's a Robin Hood type of politics, a, a Robin Hood system. Um, your your uh, product your production and labor and all that is uh, subject to be taken from you by the state, uh, presumably given to poor people. But I'd, I'd, I'd have to look at the, I'd have to look at the, uh, look at a, look it up in a dictionary to find the actual definition. But uh, I know uh, genocide and murder and you know totalitarian, you know stuff like that. I don't think it was in that definition. But I mean, I kind of, I kind of had that in in my head a long time ago. But yeah, wow, first time this ever came to light though. Yeah, a lot of the blood on his hands didn't come by way of straight-up executions. Um, a lot of it was assassinations, too. People are killed in a sense. He's not very different from the CEOs and billionaires. Here we go. He's not very different from the CEOs and billionaires who pressured our government into ignoring the most deadly and unpredictable disease we've ever faced, which promises to kill him on permanent disabled millions. I believe she's talking about, uh... Uh, climate change, uh, people exploitation, COVID, the robber barons of the Gilded Age or Gilded Age 2.0. Okay, so. Uh, the word Gina. Deliberate targeted killing of a large number of people. Okay, so. I think this is probably going to be something that's, uh, something that's going to be better off just, uh, read right on my own. So, yeah, I'm... But, yeah, she's, she's the girl I go to for the, uh, for the very rare time that I actually give a shit about current events. She's the one, I, she's the one I read on, or, she's the one I read. I don't, I've said it on my Twitch bio, too. I don't follow current events. Especially the stuff you see on mainstream media, you know, CNN, C-SPAN, um, you know, regular mainstream, mainstream news, you know, CBS, ABC, etc. So if I'm, for the times I'm actually curious about what's going on today, she's the one I read. Or pretty much anybody else that stays under the radar, like underground stuff. Uh, but otherwise, that's going to do it. Um, I pretty much said all the things that I wanted to say this morning. So, so yeah. Um, but thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow, which will be the last one for the week. Uh, but until then, though, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time. Bye for now.